Adam to Paul um, on this 18th week of Trinity, at our harvest mini season. And as such, we still have a mini season here. Can you hear me now? Do I need to come closer? Yes, better. Okay. Welcome, welcome all on this 18th Trinity, 18th Sunday in Trinity. Um, our mini harvest hasn't been collected yet, so that will be going to the food bank next week. And to speak a little bit more on that wonderful celebration we had last week, we have Ray who wants to come and give us a notice. Saturday, Sheila and Pat for selling the raffle tickets, Mags and Margaret for serving the dinners, Mags and Pat have helped clear away at the end, <laughs> Sheila for taking some of the tea towels away to wash, <laughs> and no arguments this time, but she's not here at the moment, and I understand that Shirley took the tablecloths up, yeah. which is a disappeal. We don't know, but thank you to Shirley. Yeah. Um, I did say to Jackie that if all the tickets were sold, then I will provide the veg from the garden. The only thing I couldn't provide was the potatoes, but everything else come out the garden. So it's a bit more profit to the church this time. Um, I'm still amazed at the raffle, which raised £122. Everybody so generous. And the profit from the meal itself, including additional drinks donations, was £131.04, pence, making a total profit from the harvest dinner of £253 and four pence. As always, I've put the cheques in the post for our wine waiters. <laughs> and also the auctioneer, but I thought the entertainment value on the auctioneer was absolutely amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant again. I just want to add one thing, and Jackie brought it to mind this morning. The last three events that have been held over in the hall to do with food and such like, you've all been so generous, we've raised over £600 for the church, which I think is amazing. And that's it. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd just like to add a couple of things to that, uh, without embarrassing anyone. Um, someone spoke to me earlier on that they weren't well and weren't able to attend that meal. Um, at the end of the afternoon, a meal was plated up and taken to that person. So, are we a loving, caring church? Oh, yes. Thank you. <laughs> Just a couple of notices I would like to draw to your attention. Or one in particular is the All Souls Drama Quiz, which is coming up uh, on the 14th. That's next week. Yeah, Saturday. <clears throat> that looks to be a bit of a breeze. Uh, I haven't got my ticket yet. I hope to get it. I hope everyone else will grab, grab a ticket and just show how incredibly stupid we all are. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the other thing there is the focus day on the um, World Day of Prayer and uh, there is a fish and chip supper also um, on the 14th of October. Might be a bit of a conflict there I think, but at least we can hold St Andrews and the Women of Palestine in prayer. I've been asked to draw your attention to these. It's for our memorial service on the 5th of November. And if you would like to take one of these away with you and print a name on a card, we can then place it on a, on a prayer uh, basket on the altar during that service. Going back to the harvest, uh, what you don't know is that the auction uh, 
that, was, that took place raised money for the food bank has amounted to 181 pounds. Wow. Um, we still have our produce there. If you weren't here last week and you would like to make a donation, I don't think we would argue. <laughs> Feel free. But £181 to the food bank, on top of that, is a tremendous result. So thank you one and all for your generosity. So I suppose we come to birthdays. Is there anyone that's got a birthday? Is anyone going to own up before I name them? <laughs> Sam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I believe Sam or Desmond, as others know him, has a birthday either this week or today. Today. To oh, today. Yeah. So I think perhaps we ought to, in time on the fashion, wish him well. So thank you for that. Thank you. <coughs> so let us just come before the Lord in a few moments quiet before we start our service. Lord, be in our speech and be in our hearing, be in our hearts, and we come today to worship you. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be Lord, direct our course and teach us to pray. Lift our hearts to worship you. Spirit and in truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we stand for our first hymn, which is number 558 in your hymn book. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty.
turn to our pew sheets and we say together the collect prayer for today. God, our Judge and Saviour, teach us to be open to your truth and to trust in your love, that we may live each day with confidence in the salvation which is given through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So let us now sit or kneel as we come to our time of confession and let us just take a few moments to reflect on the past week for the things that we said and wish we hadn't for the things we did and wish we hadn't and for the things we didn't say and wish we had and the things we didn't do and wish we had God our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us, save us and help us, for behaving just as we wish, without thinking of you. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, forgive us. Save, save us and help us. us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us. Save, save us and help us. us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son. Father, forgive us. Save us and May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. God, God removes our sins from us, and he will never be no more. We stand for our second hymn, 207, Blessed City, Heavenly Sailor.
May you sit for our final readings. The first reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 5, starting with the first verse. I will sing for the one I love a song about his vineyard. My loved one had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He dug it up and cleared it of stones and planted it with the choicest vines. He built a watchtower in it and cut out a wine press as well. Then he looked for a crop of good grapes, but it yielded only bad fruit. Now you dwellers in Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more could have been done for my vineyard than I have done for it? When I looked for good grapes, why did it yield only bad? Now I will tell you what I am going to do to my vineyard. I will take away its hedge and it will be destroyed. I will break down its wall and it will be trampled. I will make it a wasteland, neither pruned nor cultivated, and briars and thorns will grow there. I will command the clouds not to rain on it. The vineyard of the Lord Almighty is the nation of Israel, and the people of Judah are the vines he delighted in. And he looked for justice, but saw bloodshed, for righteousness, but heard cries of distress. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Gospel reading is taken from Matthew 21. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard. He put a wall around it, dug a wine press, and built a watchtower. Then he rented the vineyard to some farmers and moved to another place. When the harvest time approached, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect his fruit. The tenants seized his servants. They beat one, killed another, and stoned a third. Then he sent other servants to them, more than the first time, and the tenants treated them the same way. Last of all, he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, they said, he said. But the tenants saw the son. They said to each other, this is the heir. Come, let's kill him and take his inheritance. So they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? He will bring those wretches to a wretched end, they replied, and he will rent the vineyard to other tenants who will give him his share of the crop at harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read the scriptures? The stones the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvellous in our eyes. Therefore I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people who will produce its fruit. Anyone who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces. Anyone on whom it falls will be crushed. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard Jesus' parable, they knew he was talking about them. They looked for a way to arrest him, but they were afraid of the crowd because the people held that he was a prophet. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to the God. It's all here in these two readings. In our Old Testament reading, Isaiah speaks of a vineyard, and he's speaking of God. It's cultivated in rich, fertile soil, planted with the very best of, of vines that were produced, the very best fruit. 
and to protect the crop, thick hedges and a wall is built around the, the vineyard and a watchtower is put in place to keep an eye out for predators and marauding wild animals looking for a cheap meal. <coughs> Isaiah is speaking of God's love for his people Israel and how he desires to see the nation grow spiritually richly in bite in the law given to Moses. They are to grow in the rich soil God has provided, safely protected by the commandments. That's the wall. They are to shine as a light to all people, to all nations. But Israel ignored God's commandments and followed selfish ways with disregard for the poor and the needy. Isaiah goes on to prophesy the destruction of the nation at the hands of the threatening Assyrians. In Matthew's Gospel's reading, Jesus paraphrases Isaiah as he relates his parable to the listening Pharisees. It is a stinging lesson for them. It goes straight to the heart. They will know Isaiah and they will be wary of, of what Jesus is saying to them. The religious leaders who first heard this parable knew that Jesus was directing his parable at them and that Jesus was threatening them with being replaced and their place in God's kingdom given to others. He's also prophesying his own end of the son being taken away and killed. But that's been missed at this point by, by, Matthew, by Matthew's readers. The parable in Matthew describes tenants in a vineyard who keep wanting more for themselves stopping at nothing to get it, even murder. Although the story is extreme, parables still speak to our lives and situations. God wants to, to use the gifts and resources God gives us, rather than wanting something different. And I think we've all been there a little bit. It's easy to think of the things that we haven't got, or the situation that could be better. If only, if I had done this, or maybe if I could just do this, it would be okay. But we only have the present and God wants to make us faith fruitful choices that we have. I think God is saying to us, grow where you are, produce good fruit from what you have, from the gifts that I have given you. And we don't easily recognise those gifts. It's usually someone else that recognises that in us and encourages and draws us out. And we're all part of that ministry of recognising the good in other people. Because quite honestly, we can't always recognise the good in ourselves. Each one of us has a unique gift or gifts and experiences that we can use so that others can learn of God's love. Sure, we'll make mistakes, we'll get it wrong. People have been getting it wrong for, for years and years, but it's how we grow. It's how we grow in ourselves and spiritually and, and grow closer in our, in our relationship with God. Each day we can make life-giving and loving choices and each moment is forming us one way or the other. We can ask the Holy Spirit to form us into one person and the person that God desires us to be. I'm kind of thinking of a poem, of a hymn, The Bleak Midwinter. We're not really into Christmas yet, are we, and carols? But that last verse, if I were a poor man, what should I be? If I'm a shepherd, shall I bring a lamb? What can I bring him? Bring him my heart. Amen. 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 <laughs> Thank you.
If you are able, would you please stand and we will reaffirm our faith together. No, we won't. We'll sing a hymn. <laughs> <laughs> it's the glasses. <laughs> I can't see a thing. <laughs> our third hymn, 311. Lord enthroned in heavenly splendour. <clears throat> and then we'll affirm our faith. <laughs> standing as we reaffirm our faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We, we believe, believe and trust in you. you. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We, we believe, believe and trust in you. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in you. This is the faith of the Church. This, this is, is our faith. faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Would you please sit or kneel as we come to our time of prayer.
Dear Lord, we pray for those Christians around the world who are persecuted for their faith. Strengthen and comfort them in their danger and difficulty and lead their oppressors towards compassion and understanding. We especially remember Christians in parts of India who are enduring violent attacks at this time. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. Lord, we pray for the people of Israel following the violence there. Guide the leaders to work for a fair outcome and peace and unity for all nations. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, we pray for the people of Afghanistan following the deadly earthquake. We give thanks for all the rescuers and relief organisations working to relieve their sufferings and hardships. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless all those who are unwell in body, mind or spirit. Comfort them and give them strength to face their difficulties. We give thanks for all those who work to care for them in any capacity. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Shaky hand, sorry. That's what happened. We ask your blessing on Archbishop Justin, Bishop Rose, Archdeacon Darren, the Reverend Stephen, and the Reverend Kim. We thank you for all who work and volunteer in this benefice in any capacity. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. The light of God surround you, the love of God enfold you, the power of God protect you, and the presence of God watch over you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We end our prayers with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to the Lord. If you are able, would you please stand for the peace? Heaven knows that we need a lot of peace in our world today, don't we? The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share one another a sign of God's peace. <coughs>
So we come to our closing hymn, which is 398, Christ Triumphant Ever Reigning. Let us go out into the world rejoicing. It is Christ who goes before us. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Amen. Amen.